Homeostasis is all about health, wellness, and life. Anytime our body deviates from this relatively steady state, we become ill, sick, and in worst case scenario, die. It's really the main goal of a lot of our body systems is to maintain homeostasis. I often describe homeostasis as that dynamic equilibrium, which in and of itself is an oxymoron because equilibrium suggests balance, dynamics should suggest change or variation, but it's maintaining balance of specific variables within our body that are important to life. Kind of like this teeter-totter, there's a relative balance, but it keeps going up, keeps going down but it stays within a specific range, and that is homeostasis. Homeostasis is maintained by a process known as negative feedback. Homeostatic variables, as you can see here, there's a number of, of these, uh, not on the board here, but I should point out blood pressure and heart rates are significant homeostatic variables. Temperature, we need to maintain body temperature within a specific range. Oxygen, pH, which is the measurement of the hydrogen ion concentration in the body. Osmolarity, which is a solute concentration, ion, sodium, calcium, chloride, among others, water, nutrients such as lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. When we think of carbohydrates, there's a number of different types of carbohydrates, but the main focus for you should really, at this point, should be glucose. Now, one thing I said in the outset, I mentioned the dynamic equilibrium. So let's take temperature as an example. Most of us have heard that our body temperature, temperature should be 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, but that doesn't mean it has to be exactly that temperature. There's an acceptable range for body temperature from roughly 97 degrees Fahrenheit to 99 degrees Fahrenheit. So temperature can vary without you becoming sick feeling poorly, or otherwise. The same applies to oxygen. There's an acceptable range for oxygen levels. pH, our blood plasma pH, is confined within a range of 7.38 to 7.42. If it deviates from that range, we can have problems within our body. So we have different ranges. Blood glucose levels at least between meals, should be around 72 to 99 milligrams per deciliter. I'm not really too concerned about those units at this point, but please understand these are some of the important homeostatic variables that need to be maintained within a specific fairly narrow range. Let's take a look at the control systems of homeostasis. They involve a stimulus, an integrating center, target organ, and a response. One thing I don't have here is an input and output signal. This arrow right here would represent an input signal. This arrow right here would represent an output signal. Now, these are this is a system that controls homeostasis. And there's two generally, generally two different forms of control systems. There's a local one, which is in a specific region of the body that controls the variable in that specific area. And we have a larger systemic reflex control system that deals with the whole body. If we're talking about the systemic control system, the integrating center is the brain. So whatever stimulus that is, and a stimulus is any deviation of a homeostatic variable outside of its acceptable range. So if we talk about body temperature again, if say body temperature is 95 degrees, that's out of the acceptable range that we suggested was 97 to 99. So when body temperature gets out of the acceptable range, that is the stimulus that's going to kick into gear this process. There's going to be an input signal going to an integrating center. Once again, if this is the larger systemic control system, that integrating center is the brain. If it's a localized one, it doesn't leave that region and doesn't go to the brain. And we'll outline both of, the, both of these. But the integrating center, regardless of where it is, is going to determine what needs to happen to reset that homeostatic variable back to its acceptable range. Then the integrating center is going to send an output signal to a specific organ or organs, tissues, or structures within the body to help 
bring that variable back to its acceptable range. And then the response is that variable getting back to where it needs to be. So once again, if we had the stimulus of diminished body temperature of 95 degrees, the body's response would be to bring that body temperature back up to the acceptable range. So the body's response is to increase body temperature. I just want to be clear when I say increase body temperature or increase any variable or decrease any variable, I'm not suggesting, at least in this case with temperature, that we're elevating our temperature above the acceptable range. We're increasing it to get it back into that acceptable range. Now, this process I just described is what's known as negative feedback. Negative feedback maintains homeostasis and it reverses the direction of the initial stimulus. So if we talk about elevated body temperature, then the body's response would be to decrease body temperature. Whereas in the first one, we had diminished body temperature and the goal would be to increase it. Those arrows are going in opposite directions and that tells us it is negative feedback. When those arrows or the stimuli and response go in opposite directions, that lets us know we are looking at a negative feedback process. If we have diminished body temperature, the target organ is going to be the skeletal muscles, which will start shivering or twitching to generate body heat and bring it back up. If we have elevated body temperature, the target organ would be our blood vessels and sweat glands, which would decrease our body temperature back to the acceptable range. So those are really good examples of negative feedback. They apply to all of those variables we talked about. If we're dealing with a localized control system, like I said before, it's never leaving that region. So one example would be if there's a specific region of the body that is hypoxic, it has diminished oxygen perfusion to that area, that region needs more oxygen but it can deal with it locally. That is to say cells within blood vessels, epithelial cells will release a signaling molecule known as nitric oxide. Nitric oxide will cause blood vessels within that, within that specific region. And let's just say that region is the small intestine. It doesn't matter what the region is, but it would dilate the blood vessels leading to the small intestine Dilation of blood vessels will increase blood flow and as a result, improve perfusion of oxygen to that specific area. That can all happen locally. That's a local control system that doesn't deal with the brain. So we have local control systems that undergo the process or carry out the process of negative feedback, and we have systemic control systems. We also have a process known as positive feedback. Positive feedback can be a good thing. It can be necessary and is necessary in certain times in states of our body, but it does not maintain homeostasis. Now, one could argue certainly that in the overall scheme of things, it maintains lifelong homeostasis, if you will. But the way we're describing this control system, positive feedback does not maintain homeostasis. So there's Positive feedback in short is if we have a stimulus and that arrow is going up, that is to say it's getting out of its acceptable range, the body's response is to increase that stimulus even more. So it's going the same direction. That's why we call it positive. So examples of positive feedback are one is blood clotting. We have formed elements known as platelets that arrive to us a region of the body that is experiencing a hemorrhage or loss of blood due to, let's say, a laceration of a blood vessel. And those platelets are going to release signaling molecules to attract more platelets to the area to help initiate that blood clot. And those new platelets are going to release more signaling molecules to attract more platelets. Additional platelets come to the region and secrete more signaling molecules to attract more platelets. That's a classic example of positive feedback. Another one is childbirth, specifically uterine contractions. When a baby is ready to be delivered, 
It initiates a nerve impulse going to the posterior pituitary of the brain to release the hormone oxytocin. Oxytocin goes down to the uterus, specifically to the uterine muscle known as the myometrium, to cause uterine contractions. Those uterine contractions cause another impulse to go back to the posterior pituitary to increase more oxytocin, to induce more uterine contractions, and that keeps going and going and going. And as anyone knows that has experienced childbirth, those uterine contractions keep coming, they get stronger, and they get closer together due to positive feedback. Once again, positive feedback is necessary at times, but it does not maintain homeostasis. Negative feedback does. And one thing I want to point out, negative feedback is not bad. Even though the word negative is in there, it's we only refer to it as negative because the response is going in the opposite direction of the original stimulus. Homeostasis, once again, is a dynamic equilibrium that maintains specific variables within a narrow range. In 1978, there was a world-renowned tightrope walker known as Carl Valenda, and his family is still around. As a matter of fact, I think his great-grandson did some amazing trapeze work, tightrope walking at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, where his great-grandson, I believe his name is Nick, rode a motorcycle across the tightrope. But his great-grandfather in 1978 was performing an act in Puerto Rico where he was walking across a tightrope across two high rises. Carl Valenda ended up falling and dying during that event. And he died for the very same reason we are all going to die, because he lost his balance. Now, that's not to suggest we're all going to be walking across a tightrope, but we eventually die because our body loses its grasp with homeostasis. Homeostasis maintains health, wellness, and life as we know it. That's it. I'm Matt Halter. Stay tuned for the next video.